Call the meeting to order. We have the motion moved by Councillor Memorial, second by Councillor Glory, to resolve the agenda for the September 4th, 2018 regular meeting. Council will be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Memorial, second by Councillor Glory, to resolve that the minutes of the August 21st, 2018 regular meeting council be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, we have a delegation. We have Caroline Hewson representing CJ7. Welcome to our council meeting, Caroline. You can come to the table and uh, council received a copy of your proposal, so I'll just turn it over to you and away you go. Okay, thank you very much for letting me come and talk to you this evening. I'm representing JC7 and we are dealing with a new way of waste management, which is using enhanced gasification, whereby we will be eliminating landfill and offering a full waste management solution. So we can do everything from pick up or just simply receiving your waste, however you would prefer to do it. Now, gasification has been used in the past in other parts of the world. It hasn't been used in Manitoba for waste processing, so this is a little bit of trailblazing for us. The system we're going to be using is the UTOC system. Now, some of you may have seen the Overta about six or seven years ago. That was done by the same engineer. And he has now enhanced the process so that we can use continuous flow gasification. That means we can process up to 40 tons a day. For every 18 tons of waste that we process, we need 12 tons of septic waste. So that makes a big difference to local communities, being able to deal with municipal solid waste and the septic waste. So keeping it simple, we can come and pick up your waste using garbage trucks, take it to our plant, process it, and then we recycle 100% of the metals and the glass in the municipal solid waste. Now, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, there are very few outlets for glass, so we'll be crushing it and putting it into aggregates. We'll also be taking commercial waste, and we'll also be creating energy from this system. So the second year of processing waste, we will be building greenhouses, and the waste energy produced will go into the greenhouses, and we will produce commercial crops. Now, we also have other options for you for the waste collection. If you prefer to continue along your lines at the moment, we can provide you with containers, 33 foot long, 60 to 65 cubic yards, and we will pick them up twice a month. The rate for the pickup on the containers is $1,600 per month, includes two pickups. That's from Swan River to our plant, which is south of the park in Rossburn. The processing fee per ton is $95, which means it is slightly below what your existing landfill rates are. Normally they're running at between $97 and $100 per ton. So that's what we're doing. We would very much like you to be involved. The first plant is going to be built in Rossburn. Uh, we have four municipalities committed to it there, and we would like Swan River to be the fifth. Councillors, have any questions? Not so much a question, just a comment. You've you've brought forward your proposal at, uh, at uh, the right time. I can tell you that because we're right in the middle of kind of. Uh, uh, looking at our options as far as uh, as far as waste management and and uh, moving to to a, a more modern uh, system of garbage pickup, so so we'll definitely uh, our our waste uh, management committee will definitely be taking a look at this, I would imagine, and, and crunching some numbers. Um, it's a lot to take in right off the hop, and we just it issued is. this report tonight, so so I don't really have any questions, but we'll definitely I, I assume Derek and Darren will be crunching the numbers and. Uh, and including this in the report to council on, on our, what our path forward should be. 
Councillor Whiten and Councillor Sample. I'm sure you have uh, references from other entities that are using this process right now. There are no other entities using this process. Uh, I thought you had some in Europe, other, other countries. Yes, but not this technology. It's very hard to condense everything we're doing in a, in a small presentation. The UTOC system that we'll be using is new technology because previously the issue with gasification was getting over a thousand degrees. Whereas these engineers have now developed new technology in order to get to 1350 degrees. So that means that it burns what's in the chamber and then we have a backdraft and the water content from the septic waste which turns it to vapour. So that means that the emissions are less than half of what they would be from an incinerator. Now the last prototype that was built was accredited and approved by Manitoba Conservation, which is now Manitoba Sustainable Development. And they have actually been involved in the process with this engineer for 10 years. And he has done five prototypes, built and dismantled them all, and now we will be his first official order. Any video or something like that to show us how this works? Sorry? Video and how this works? I can, I can send that to you. Um, oh, no. He has a presentation that he's done, but unless there's more um, interest, it's confidential. So I'm very happy to send it to you for the council to have a look at. Okay, I appreciate that. Councilor Sample. Uh, you see you have four communities signed up already. Can I ask who? Rossburn, Yellowhead, Prairie View and Russell Binskar. And another question, you said that you use septic waste, so if you took garbage collection from here, would you be taking septic waste from here or you use what's in Rossburn? The plant at Rossburn is right next door to their lagoon, so we're going to be using that septic waste. So that doesn't benefit our side of things? No, uh, we do have interest from south of you. Um, and that would be a bigger population if we were looking at Dauphin, Grandview, Gilbert Plains, then it would be in best interest to set another plant up at that point. So the size of plant that you are, is it in construction now or in the? We're in the capital funding stage. Okay. Um, so the plant is 5.6 million. We are in application for the FCM Green Fund that doesn't become public until April of next year. In the meantime, we have 3.7 million uh, in lease dollars for the UTOC system and the equipment, and we're in $2 million fundraising between the municipalities. So when I say $95 a tonne, that's for those committed in the beginning. Secondary applicants into the plant will be $97 a tonne. So I never read this, so if we come in on this stage, is there a portion of the funding that we have to come up with? We would welcome it, but it's not expected. Now the other RMs are using that as an infrastructure loan, so we would be paying back the loans, but they would get them in and that's how it would be written into their budgets. So this would take all of our garbage? Yes. And recycling. And recycling? Well, Everything. you don't need to recycle right. because we're separate. doing that. You just don't need to separate, you really have to just mm -hmm. everything goes into one. The only thing that we recommend you keep separate is paper and cardboard. Now we can provide you with um, six cubic yard bins for people if they want to do that. At the end of the day, paper and cardboard is still an energy, so it's still going to be recycled by the growing of crops in the greenhouse. But it does have another life, so if you have, if you have the ability to keep it separate, it would be appreciated. So the size of plant you would build in Rossborough um, would employ how many, do you figure? Eleven to start before the greenhouse. Uh, the greenhouse we expect to tender out that portion of the business because we're not horticulturists and you're better off getting people that know what they're doing and instead of scrabbling through and trying to make it work. Councillor Wayne. Dolphin is just going through some big process of building a greenhouse. 
with vermilion. And uh, is there a market for greenhouse vegetables right now? We have a buyer already for everything we can produce. No other councillors have any questions. So your gasification uh, process, the only byproduct is heat, or are you using the steam to, to generate electricity or anything like that? No, we're not going to not use that to. because okay. it's too costly to convert it. Okay. So we'll just be processing the energy to heat the plant okay. and the greenhouse. Councillor Sack. I know this might be a question you might not be able to answer. So why was Rossburn picked as a location? Did those uh, municipalities approach? Every mis municipality we went to asked what they needed to do to get us there because it's, it's going to be a big change to whatever community we go into to start with. For us, Rossburn had uh, the best site, with it being right next door to the lagoon. It's a greenfield site, it's on the edge of town, and it's more central. Russell is great because it's on three highways, but it's right on the border. And we're concentrating on Manitoba. I know we're very close to the border as it is anyway. Um, but it made sense, more sense, to be in Rossburn, especially with the commitments from Yellowhead and Prairie View. This will be the first one in Canada, you said? Yes. But it won't be the last. Okay, so it's been quite a bit for council to sort of absorb from just getting the information now, but I'm sure you will have some questions later on in your email addresses, correct? Yes. And uh, we'll direct those questions. So thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. item on the agenda are the demolition orders. <clears throat> Do you want to comment on those, Darren? Uh, this is the fire department. I'm guessing I just read these today. I'm, I've got to be honest, I'm not, I'm not involved with, uh, with Darren's demolition requests. These, um, these two homes have been vacant and were damaged by fire for quite some time. So um, this is the first step in going towards demolition. It's just the order to demo them, uh, to give the owners time to, to do it themselves. And then um, if that doesn't happen, then the town will take steps to go forward and demolish the homes. I, I haven't looked at it. Has any of the other councillors seen it? Mm -hmm. Bad? No. I'll, I'll be going in favor of one. Any other discussion? So we have the motion moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Delory. Resolve the orders to demolish as per provided information be approved. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, the next one is the letter from the Senior Citizen uh, Center requesting the reduction of their permit fees. We have the motion. Must have jumped. Okay. There isn't a resolution. There isn't a resolution. Any comments from counselors? Councillor Delorier. I guess one issue I found with, like, uh, according to our fee schedule, they were charged what they were supposed to be. But I guess one issue where I would, or one, one place I would take issue with in our fee schedule, if you look, we, we charge a, uh, a commercial or industrial fee. Those terms, commercial and industrial, are zoning terms, not necessarily, it, like in our building bylaw, they have no definition, and they're not referenced anywhere in our building bylaw, but they show up in our fee schedule. So in my mind, we should either call it, we, we should either distinguish residential and non-residential, but I mean, we, in our building bylaw, which is where the, the fee schedule comes from, 
we we have no uh, no definition for commercial. So, it, you know, they they could easily argue this that that's not a commercial building. There's no commerce that goes on in there. It's more institutional than anything. I, I understand we're taking commercial in, is in the context of the type of building that we're we're building, but yeah. but I think that they'd have an argument there. So, the issue you have is on the fee schedule under. 3C commercial and industrial buildings ninety dollars. Uh, no, uh, I, I th it's in one like F or G. I was like, where's it? Down? You got the fee schedule up? Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, you like see where it says that that should be that should just say non-residential because we you. we don't define what commercial or uh, industrial buildings are in our building bylaw, which is where this fee schedule gets its authority from. So just the removal of industrial. Uh, I, I would think so because th those are zoning terms, not, not terms from our building bylaw. Okay. Um, have we, as far as spray spray foam insulation, have have we had other commercial buildings that have had to pay that? The town's cold storage building. We paid the fee on that. Yeah. Uh, Ron asked me for a list if anyone knew of any others. There are a few that I'm aware of, but I don't know if they paid any uh, permits for them or not. Yeah, Ron, Ron just simply said, get them the list if there is. What does council want to do with this? Anything? Well, I, for, for me, I think that, you know, like it's, it's senior citizen sold is no different than a lot of private or uh, volunteers trying to come together to run a, a non-profit organization so I think that if there's a way for them to not have to pay if there is if you want to call a loophole through it then um, perhaps maybe we should reconsider it I wasn't really able to find I, that's what I was looking for <laughs> earlier was a loophole for them and I really wasn't able to find a loophole for them like I that's, that's, just what it, my, that's, that's just my thoughts anyway, so. Any other comments from the council? Um, I would think instead of making a decision tonight is maybe it goes back to the building committee for a meeting to discuss that and see where we can fix this and come up with a, a recommendation for council to take a look at. I think that's fair. That's a good idea. Okay, so. Okay, next we have the uh, superintendent works report. Any questions to Derek on the superintendent works report? Councillor Deloria. How are we doing at the uh, uh, water treatment plant? I see we had the, it was blocked off there. Is everything on uh, uh, schedule? The, the testing, we've, uh, we haven't, I didn't get a chance to test last Friday or today. <laughs> But hopefully, uh, if we can get done the hydrant on Pine Cove, as soon as uh, I get my guys off that job, I can test the bypass system again. And once I once I confirm that everything's being chlorinated properly, uh, we can we can basically take down the system until the construction is going to happen at the end of September. So it is up there waiting for this test that I realize that people are calling to get this roadblock down, but. Uh, we do have to test and make sure it's working properly. And just to refresh, it's Logan Stevens that got that? Or who, who was the contractor that got the... Uh, the T, TSL Mechanical. Okay. Um, what about the uh, well number four? We're all, everything's good everything there. Everything's good there, so it's making water right now? Yeah. So we have a tender that closes this coming Friday? Yeah. So Can that's for a control building. And uh, just basically to upgrade our monitoring. When you uh, when you present the the results of that tender, or when you have a recommendation for us, can you also give us just a short? I know I understand you're on just a short breakdown of what what our costs were so far. Like, because this yeah. has been a multi-phase thing. Yeah. And I just just so we're all on the same page as to what phase we're in, what money is coming from where. Yeah, I can give you guys what was budgeted, where we're at. Okay, first. that would be good. Councillor. Jacobson and then Councillor Morial. 
Um, Derek, just on the projects uh, for fall here, the back alleys that we have, some areas that were slated for some uh, work. What's um, uh, I hear that you're looking for uh, hydro to do some flagging or something, or what's uh, the purpose of that? Yeah, well, that job is not under emergency, so usually we get locates within three days when it, it's an emergency. We can't, they know it's not an emergency, so we, sometimes it takes weeks. So we have got those locates in the past. Our schedule didn't allow us to go there, so we've redone those locates, and, and really we, we won't be able to get there until, uh, like we have culverts to do in Athlone, we have the north entrance sign to dig in, uh, we have the Robley Road to build, I should say Westwood Road to build, and then the back lanes are all done. So it will be late, but it, it has to be done. So that particular one that we're talking about, it's be, you have to dig it out a bit then and, and, and re... Uh, yeah, the high, basically we're going to be taking out the high spots and running water in the back lane. We're going to be lowering the back lane so that it... it comes take, to that drain. That's right. Okay. So we're hoping that we'll have that project done this year. I've promised that it will be done. It has to get done. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Councillor Morin. And um, Councillor White. Back to the water treatment plant, Derek. Um, what, like I read in your report, that there would be some expectations from the public and businesses. Uh, what are those expectations? Are we looking at reduced water pressures or? We, we are going to word it a uh, 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 water conservation effort, just not as strict as obviously the emergency. The hospital won't be told to change any operational. The, the, the restaurants, you know, run normally, no changes. We'll just ask people not to waste if they can refrain from watering their lawns. If they, if they can hold off that one load of laundry or whatever it is, just no waste, no excess use of water. And how long period. do you think that's, or anticipate that project to take for that? Uh, they have a, around a max of, we're hoping four and a half days. That'll be, we're, we're trying to extend that period as long as we can. But uh, just with how a water treatment plant works and, and how much room we have in our reservoirs, four and a half days is estimated. So basically we're looking at approximately a week for people to sort of yeah. conserve water just to not waste it without the, and there is absolutely no risk of losing water. Exactly. Yeah, yeah we will be ramping down our pressure to the 32, 33 PSI where normally it's at 58 and 60. <clears throat> and we have, a, we have a communication plan for that to go out to the, all the residents and the businesses? or. Yes, and that is what, the longer they take to get that to me, the longer I don't let them start. So it's, uh, we have to, we have to uh, not only be in the paper, we have to be sending letters to the high users, especially the hospital, the fire department, they all need to know what's going on. Councillor White, I see you're doing, the, and thank you for it, work at the cemetery. How are, we doing, how are you guys doing out there? For leveling the uh, head storage? Uh, we're still behind. There's lots out there that, that need straightening, but we, we just send the guys out when Mike, uh, like basically when we could on rain days, stuff like that, to get the worst ones. There's some really big ones in the back that, that need to be straightened before they fall over. It's just trying to find the manpower to stop other projects to go out there for a two day period. And Fix some of those skits. What do you use for equipment to do that? We have a, a headstone lifter, I guess it is. It uses its own weight to, to lift a headstone and not scratch it. It's a mechanical machine? It's a wheel? It's a motor? No, it's it's used with a backhoe or a forklift, anything that'll lift it up. Does that create problems having the backhoe in there with tracks? Yeah. This year, probably the best year to do it because it's dry. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't had too many complaints, but there's still complaints. They haven't been there yet. Yeah. Any other questions to Derek? If not, we have the resolution moved by Councillor DeLaurier, seconded by Councillor Morio, resolved that the Superintendent Works Report be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carry it. Motion moved by Councillor DeLaurier, seconded by Councillor Mora, resolved the Swan River Fire Department report for August 2018 be received. Discussions? All in favor? Carried.
The motion moved by Councilor Deloria, second by Councilor Morial, resolve that counts as followed by hereby approved for payment. General accounts from check 22933 to 23072 for a total of 2,527,609.55. And payroll accounts from check 4294 to 4301 for a total of 103,545.77. Any questions to Julie on any of the checks? There are some explanations for some of them. All in favor of the resolution? Carried. Okay. The motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Delorier. Resolve the following building permit applications we received. Margaret Romack, 1316 First Street North Fence, $6,500. Ed Clark, 702 First Street uh, North, Insulate Roof, $21,000. Gwen Palmer, 1410 Curry Road, wheelchair ramp, $2,200. Daryl May, 410 10th Avenue North, replaced deck, $1,500. Mitch Duguay, 124 4th Avenue West, fascia, $15,600. Margaret Romack, 1316 First Street North, fencing, $1,760. Leonard Nemechik, 415 11th Avenue South, garden shed, $1,000. Discussion, all in favor? Okay, we have the management minute meetings. Management meeting minutes, I got it reversed. Uh, any questions to Julie on any of those? Councillor White. A more comment than anything. Uh, I did read through them. I just, the phenomenal amount of paperwork that Terry Ganita does, the activities. He's, uh, he's got his hand on so many things, and so please thank him for us for that exemplary work. Councillor Deloria. Um, I see we had uh, the gentleman from, and this is re reference to the uh, 30th meeting minutes, I think. Uh, we had the gentleman from uh, our IT contractor in the Neptune train, which I have no problem with. He probably needs to be in that train. Do, we, can you provide a report or <coughs> schedule somebody to, because I know your time here is limited with us, but schedule somebody to provide a report on what, what kind of usage we have from, like, I guess, how, how often are we using that, that IT support service um, and, and what it's costing us and, and just details around that, just uh, so Council can maybe uh, evaluate how, how much uh, we're paying for that. Anything else, to Julie? Okay, reports. Councilor Morial. Um, in the last uh, two weeks, um, on August 25th, uh, I attended, along with Councillor White, the uh, Museum Harvest Supper, which was uh, an excellent meal and uh, met a lot of people, seen some of uh, the history of the equipment and all that stuff that was used in the valley and stuff, so it was very informative and met a lot of people there. Um, August 27th, uh, members of council met with uh, our counterparts of G5 um, to have a meeting regarding uh, preparation of a report or whatever you want to call it to the Boundary Commission uh, regarding the uh, new electoral uh, boundary for Manitoba with our opposition against it and what the reasons why we want to oppose it and uh, offer some solutions. Um, August 29th, um, Claire, uh, Mayor McKenzie, myself, and uh, uh, Julie, we met with the AMM uh, Executive Committee when they were in town. Uh, we had some good discussion with them on some of the issues that we brought forward that we feel are a concern um, to the uh, community and the Valley as a whole, and they were going to work on some of those. And we had multiple personnel committees uh, with some upcoming uh, personnel changes that we're having in the office here. So. We're uh, working on those uh, strategies to uh, replace and uh, fill some of the vacancies that we are working with in, at the current point. That's all I got. Thank you. Councillor Deloria. Um, well, the last few weeks feel like a shock to the system after hardly having any meetings throughout the summer, and it feels like I've seen you guys every day for the last two weeks uh, dealing with personnel issues, and we also. Uh, Met to uh, was at this meeting with at the school division office to get a unified uh, unified uh, 
voice when it comes to uh, expressing our extreme displeasure with the new uh, boundaries. There's lots of good ideas on, on what boundaries could have possibly looked like while still keeping uh, while still keeping within the, the criteria that the commission had to deal with. So the, the, the proposal that was put down forth, forth before everybody is not the only solution. There's, there's other solutions and ones that would have involved us having our own MLA from the Swan Valley. So I am quite happy that we'll be sending a, a, a strong voice to express our displeasure. Um, and then uh, we're just earlier tonight before this meeting, we had a, uh, a landfill committee meeting uh, to discuss possible changes to, uh, to garbage pickup, recycling pickup. It's all very embryonic at this point, but uh, we're always looking at, uh, at moving forward and modernizing. So uh, that's it for me. Councillor Jacobson. Uh, I'll echo the same as far as the, uh, the increased uh, personnel meetings that we have uh, experienced over the last uh, few weeks uh, from, my, uh, from the previous council's discussion. Uh, one thing that I wanted to say is that in my last report that I uh, mentioned was the, uh, the uh, railroad line getting repaired and getting operational again to Churchill. And in the last week we heard some good news out of that and they're going to start to do the repairs and get that rail line operating. So that's good news uh, for you know, the PAW and, and even down to us as far as to Churchill for uh, any type of commerce or uh, tourism. Uh, I failed to actually do a report last uh, council, so I'm going to actually do it now. Uh, we had a chance to meet with the uh, fire chief and have a uh, discussion about uh, how things are going, you know, with his department and uh, some of the things to be looking down the road. So some of the highlights were that um, they've had uh, increased uh, larger calls, I guess we could say, this year, and they are a little bit over budget as far as some of the man hours that they have uh, to deal with these fires. Uh, Darren is doing what he can to, uh, to deal with that at this time, but it's kind of hard when you're dealing with fires that you don't know that are going to come about. Um, the, char the fire chief uh, called for review of the existing building, which was built in the 70s, so he's asking for review on that, so that might be done now or in the next, uh, in the next term. Um, the fire chief has uh, asked for uh, increased commercial inspections of buildings, tenant buildings, and so on, uh, simply because of the situation of the fire that we experienced on Main Street this this past summer. And so he wants to start to uh, get a little bit more aggressive with the commercial inspections. So we'll be seeing uh, a letter coming from Darren probably shortly with that. And uh, the other thing I was gonna ask was with that EMM meeting that I missed, uh, did you guys get a chance to talk about bus service and, and my question I had in regards to funding from the province or uh, We mentioned lobby. it and uh, they are fully aware of it and are in talks with uh, the province and stuff like that. Um, with hopefully trying to get Greyhound to delay their departure to give time for private industry to develop business plans and get funding to sort of set up shortfall um, bus service between the community. Uh, they did mention that there was one working up that would be looking to link southern, uh, come up through the off in the paw and flint and stuff like that. that right? Right? They were, that they heard, they can't, it's not I'm a for sure thing, but it's, uh, it's one of the proposals that they are aware of that is being worked on. Because it is one of the concerns that I've had from a couple of constituents that are concerned about the lack of or opportunity for them to be able to be bust if you want to say to uh, southern areas for a doctor or whatever it might be so that's it okay, thank you councillor white uh same comments relative to the fire chief and, and we have a fire chief that goes after lots of things and sometimes it's frustrating but a real compliment to him we're trying to make things happen and he certainly is uh, the commercial inspections i think is a big deal and reflect that could have been a tragedy over here if the fire inspections had spotted some of the inadequacies of the building taking people out windows that might not have happened if inspections had taken place. I uh, met with Prairie Mountain Health again, uh, just updating with us uh, with what's happening. Never enough in my mind, but uh, that's fine. Uh, two or three meetings with management and personnel, I think they're going well. They're very open with one another. And on the 22nd, I met with the MLA and one of the cabinet uh, liaison people, and we talked about the CT scan and the importance of that to our community, the compliment to Mayor McKenzie and, 
Hospital and others for uh, the work they've done up to now. Uh, and with the mayor and I, we met with the RCMP relative to some Facebook posts and some issues that are happening in our community. And uh, they too are quite concerned in that world, so we will support them. Uh, same as Councillor uh, Mori, I went to the Museum of Harvest Festival and uh, what a wonderful job of preserving history for our valley and uh, I brought greetings on behalf of Council and the community. Uh, I met with Minister Spire, Sustainable Development Minister, and we talked about LP and how good it is for our community and how we really, really need it and other ideas relative to tourist potential for our valley. Uh, September 3rd, less than a day or two ago, I met with uh, Dr. Andani and talked about the concepts of the CT scan, which seems to constantly, and it's his belief if we get the CT scan, which will save money for government, not even talking about the health issues, which will obviously save lives and do those things. We get the, uh, the CT scan, and then we get surgeons, we get surgeons, we get anesthetists, we get anesthetists, we can have babies in our valley again. So I, uh, I know Mayor McKenzie and the MLA are working hard towards that. It's interesting that two of my peers brought up the, uh, the busing situation. Uh, I had a family member just come in from Whitehorse. She landed in Brandon and takes a shuttle to Dauphin. Now the shuttle to Dauphin is from Dauphin to Brandon and I believe Winnipeg on a regular basis. It's $45 one way. That shuttle will also take you to a medical appointment, it will take you to shopping, and it will bring you back. So if we can connect with, and I, I talked to the Chair of the Rise uh, Concert Sackle today and I've talked to uh, part of your team, and they're, they're going to have a look at that and maybe we could have that we could have our own shuttle, but we connect with them, or they could expand. I've given the gentleman staff my card, asking them to get in touch with us. It appears we have to be, may have to be a little more proactive and, and track these down. So uh, Heather Nielsen is with that on her Facebook today, and she says she's going to try it. So it's 110 miles away, guys, and uh, it, it seems like one option for the short term. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Friesen. Um, I was away on a holiday, so I don't have much to report. Um, three of us are going to Morris this weekend for the Communities and Blue Seminar. And uh, Monday, Denise Weir, she's the Regional Library Consultant, is coming through Swan and stopping at the library, so uh, she's hoping to meet with some of the board members. Uh, she's promoting an accessibility accessibility legislation. Um, also, don't forget this is giveaway weekend. Put your stuff on the boulevard with a free sign on it. Thank you. We haven't found out what how we did in communities and room. Will that be announced at the thing in this weekend? Okay. Councillor Sample. I too don't have much to report. I was on my vacation as well, not with Councillor Friesen, <laughs> but in uh, <laughs> direction. Uh, just one meeting since I've been back, and that was today with the Environmental Services Committee discussing the future of garbage disposal within Council River. So, uh, Thank you. Pretty much everything has been uh, covered. Uh, put together the Boundary Review Commission uh, presentation. I think it was circulated to all councils. So I thought I emailed it to everybody. Everybody had a copy. And we went to the other municipalities too. Uh, suggesting any changes or revisions, and that's happening on the 13th. We'll probably take the town van to Dauphin on the 13th for a presentation. And it was unanimous between the other four other three municipalities and the school board that we don't like the, the proposed uh, constituency of Dauphin Swamp River. Uh, we would not like to be in a constituency in Dauphin. The suggestion one is one called Duck Mountain or Parkland, with all the municipalities that would be bordering on the Duck Mountain. So. That's sort of where the proposal will be going. So we'll continue on with bylaws and resolutions. See this Julie? report. Oh, CAO's report. Julie. I also took a few vacation days, but um, since then I've been busy answering questions about the election. Um, lots of potential candidates have come in to, to get papers. And um, and I've also been answering questions about the upcoming tax sale that we're having on September the 12th. So it should be a busy time uh, coming up because September 12th to the 18th is the nomination period. So I should be meeting with lots of people. Mm -hmm. 
So we have the motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, seconded by Councillor Dora, resolved that resolution 218-401 be rescinded. That was appointing Shirley Bateman as, as senior election officer. Julie will be doing that job, and Shirley and uh, Esther Webb will be the assistants to run the municipal election. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Delori Councillor Delorier, whereas the 2018 capital budget included 28000 for pool assessment and repairs to be borne by the Recreation Facilities Reserve and costs 43630 43, have been incurred. Therefore, be it resolved that 28000 is transferred from the Recreation Facilities Reserve Fund to the General Operating Fund. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? The motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen, resolved the Town of Swan River request from the Water Services Board of Manitoba Technical and Financial Assistance to upgrade the water supply system. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Uh, Derek, can you elaborate on what that's for? What are we, uh, what are we asking for? Basically, we're just asking for financial and technical assistance for the, for the well projects, both of them, Phase 1 and Phase 2, and the water treatment plant. Project. So uh, uh, we have nothing in, in, in writing yet. This is the official request. We're hoping for for uh, a matching uh, five hundred thousand dollar grant to to go towards. It'd be a share, fifty percent. So they, their contribution would be five hundred thousand on a million dollars worth of projects. <clears throat> Any other discussion? All in favor? The motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen, resolved that Diana Taylor be authorized to attend the Manitoba Communities in Bloom annual conference and awards being held in Morse, Manitoba, uh, September 7th and 8th. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Just one person going. No, we passed the other two last time. Okay. Just three of us going. The motion moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor White, resolved to pursuant to Section 152.3 of the Municipal Act. Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. All in favor? Carried. 